hello back. So uh, the simulation has been uh, finished and uh, now it's time for us to check out a couple of results if we always do. Uh, we want to go to the results and right click and look at the solution data and see how we got the result. You can see that the number of tetrahedrals are increasing uh, a lot high and um, also the total energy level is like merging into 18 and the energy percentage error is very close to zero. Uh, we actually we set it to be uh, the target of 0.1%. Uh, we get that and uh, uh, that would be basically the information that you need to know about the uh, simulations. Now let me show you first the, uh, the basically B of uh, the magnitude B. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and uh, select the, the north 1, 2 and south 1 and 2 and uh, I can just right click here and on the field I can go on B and I can go on B vector and I can say that I do need that to be plotted on the surface only uh, for the number of objects, we want to select all the objects, and uh, we can actually uh, that would be only these objects on the surface of this object, and uh, the rest is fine. I'm just pressing OK. It takes a couple of seconds to create the vectors. There we go. So now we do have the uh, the B. So if you want to see it in a better way, what you can do is you can go and uh, click or right click on that and say modify the attribute and uh, <coughs> over here for the scale you can basically say the scale I'm gonna be from 0 to 1 maybe okay and uh, you apply that and also you wanna say that the markers there's no need for this mapping the size and you can make it a bit smaller so you can see more and uh, you know, um, should be okay. And uh, in the plots, also you can uh, make the spacing in a way that you can basically see more. And maybe you can say the minimum of two and the maximum of probably um, four or five. Should be okay. Press okay. And there we go. We can actually change the number of that so you can have better understanding of what we have. So if you look at that, you can see that the magnetization for <coughs> the, the poles are working very uh, well. Uh, we have these um, magnetization directions and as you can see it's uh, it's like a sine wave uh, as we defined uh, because it was on the R direction so you can see that the 45 degrees actually helping that to be uh, like this so this is one way of basically creating um, the magnetization direction for uh, the purpose of the permanent magnet. Now let me show you how to use the calculator here and uh, you can actually uh, draw the magnetization on this using the calculator and uh, basically using a rectangular plot. So to do that you need to calculate some parameters and uh, to do the calculation for the parameters you need to actually calculate the field that is going inside of the flux and uh, again to calculate the flux in the different positions of this model we have to create uh, three uh, different loops and these loops are going to be <coughs> basically uh, 
the area that we are going to run the calculation for. So uh, first thing we want to do is we want to go to the tools and then to one of options. And inside the options, we want to make sure that in the modeler option, um, we have this automatically powered closed polyline off. So when we do that, uh, when you uh, make a circle, um, the circle would not be a face. It would not be a plane. It would be just a line. So let's go and uh, create the, um, the circle here. Okay, uh, and uh, it asks you that I already finished the simulation results. Do you want to um, basically uh, add this to the model? Because in that case, I will nullify all the simulation data. Since we are going to use this circle for our uh, post-secondary calculation, we do not want to lose our results and simulation solution data because uh, basically this is not going to be the part of the model. So in this case, uh, we, we do say that do you want to create a non-model object? You say yes, it's going to be a non-model object. So when you say that, nothing will happen to your solution data. Um, so for the x value, put the value z, 0. For the y value, also 0. For the z value, put the value of minus 10 milli millimeter. For the dx, <coughs> uh, only put the value of 40 for the dx. So it will give you a ring. I'm looking at uh, circles, a big circle. And uh, you can call it circle um, A, for example, or 1. Um, and now uh, you press OK on that. Okay, so uh, we do have the circle A. Uh, we now what we want to do is we want to click on the circle A and on the edit we want to go and basically duplicate that along the line and uh, the, long, uh, the line uh, coordinate would be 0 for x, 0 for y, and minus 10 for z and then for dx and dy and dz it's going to be 0 0 and for the dz it's going to be 10. So press ok on that and the number of uh, duplicates are going to be three duplicates and uh, that's it just press ok on that and you will get the, the duplicate and <coughs> i'm going to press ok on that so this would be basically B probably and this is going to be I will change that to C so you know what you are exactly doing okay now uh, now that we create the circles we open the calculator and uh, I'm just right, -click right clicking on the field overlays and uh, I go on input and I create. I, I, I make sure that uh, on the quantity I will select the B, and then on the general I will select the smooth. So I want to make the B a smooth, and then on the vector um, I will go for <coughs> a scale, and uh, I will use the scale scalar. Sorry, and I use a scalar and. Um, X for the input again we go for function and then for the function uh, we use the uh, scalar and uh, phi so we have the two, uh, two pi and uh, for the phi and then we have um, a scalar uh, trivial cosine so we go to a scalar trivial cosine and uh, on the general we times this two together and then we will have input B again for the general
we go for a smooth and <coughs> the scale scalar y <coughs> phi this time it's going to be a sine and then we are going to sum up these two and we're going to call this rad and we are done with this uh, now we go to the result right click on that and rectangle plot on the calculation ones for the geometry we will select the circle A and um, we select the brad uh, with no function on that we create the new report for that and then we will select the geometry B and add the trace. We select the geometry circle C and we'll add. Oh, okay. I should add. So add trace. So we have A and B and C. Okay, I just close that. And that basically is the result of having uh, the magnetization for the three different circles here. So you can see the magnetization in these three different circles. And uh, we did manage to have a kind of a customized a magnetization for that. Okay, so uh, now what we are going to do is we are going to uh, show you um, how to create the same custom uh, magnetization directions. Instead of having four uh, poles for the magnet, we want to have one pole and then we want to define this uh, characteristics inside the materials and uh, we can actually define a customized material and then define a function within the material that will act exactly the same as this um, magnetization directions that you see here but uh, we'll, it would be on one magnet ring so we are not going to have four magnet ring and define uh, four different we're going to have a one magnet ring and that's how we are going to define on that so that would be the second uh, way of creating an alternative way of creating a customized magnetization direction uh, so uh, follow us um, on this and I will show you more actually if you had any more questions uh, please leave in the comment below uh, also you can subscribe to this channel if you want to be more updated about the latest videos that I'm up, up to update, uh, updating basically every week or two.